Okay, um, tell us about yourself. Hi, I am Mrs. Servan and I teach junior high band and junior high choir here. I teach ninth grade English too, possibly 12th grade English next year. Um, why should kids do band? They should do band because band is a skill building process and the longer that you're in band, the better songs you get to play and the more fun you have. And um, it also is something that teaches you every language. Um, it's an international language and you learn science, you learn math, you learn reading through being in band. So you should definitely stay in it. What is tuning? Tuning is where I use a machine in class and at the beginning of class, after we warm up our instruments, we tune to a specific note and I have a machine that shows the students whether they need to push in their tuning slide or pull out their tuning slide or the mouthpiece to get to be more in tune. So it sounds a lot better when you play in tune. What are the three scales we play to warm up? Well, the three that we play right now are B flat, C and E flat scales. And if you don't know what those are, don't worry, I'll teach them to you. Um, at the elementary, we buy reeds differently. How do we buy them now? At our school here, when you buy a reed for a reed instrument, you just let Mrs. Servin myself know that you need one. And I have a drawer that you get it out from and a little chart. You sign your name and you mark down how many reeds you're purchasing. And then at your convenience, you go down to the office and take care of payment. And then you just bring me the receipt and we mark it off. So it's pretty simple. You don't have to leave the room. How do we have tests in band? There are a few play tests in band, and I don't make you play in front of everybody unless there's a chair challenge. But normally, you go out of the room to the choir room, and I have a little tiny handheld recorder, and you get to play your little test, which tells me how well you're doing individually on your own. No one else hears you. You just announce your name, your instrument, and you play the section of music that I've asked you to play. So it's really easy. Um, how different are the concerts up here? Well, the concerts up here you get to combine with the high school and so we have a fall concert and that involves junior and senior high band and choirs and then in the springtime we have a double concert too and in the springtime we like to combine all the grades for one song, 7 through 12, and in band and in choir that's really fun to do to have the whole big group singing together. Um, you also do choir, how do you tune in choir? We warm up in choir. Your voice is in tune just by using your ear. So mostly we just have to warm up and get our voice vocal cords working and then we're ready to go. And in choir, we're focusing more on learning how to read music and follow, have our voices follow what the music says too. Um, what rules do you have? What rules do I have? Yeah. Well, come to class and find out. It's pretty simple. Just basically be respectful participate every day and have a positive attitude. Those are pretty much the general rules. We have a lot of fun in class. All right, thank you, Ms. Irvin. Hello. Hey, what's up? Uh -oh. um, what are you teaching? I'm the art teacher and I teach uh, seven through 12 art. All right, I'm gonna ask you some questions and you just answer them. Okay. Um, do you have a particular area of art you work in most? My favorite kind of art is clay, and I love printmaking. So we do a lot of stuff with clay and with printmaking. Um, oh yeah, about the supplies. Oh, okay. So the way that the supplies work this year, we're changing it. So everybody's going to get assigned a supplies. So you'll get your own pencils, your own eraser, and everything. If you lose it, or if you break it, or if you ruin it, you have to buy another one. So you have to be responsible for your own materials, because what's happened is this year, um, people have ruined paintbrushes, they've left, um, they've broken pencils, and we're wasting a lot of supplies. So everybody has to pay a $20 art fee, and we buy you your supplies, but if you lose them, then that's your problem. You have to pay for it so you have to be careful with your stuff because i will be nice to you but if you keep losing your stuff i can't keep giving you free ones you gotta be responsible all right uh what about salt
where to look at pictures, but what I find is that this year I've been taken advantage of by the middle school specifically. People have been texting, people have been Snapchatting a lot, so I usually will let you kind of start out where I let you have them, and then I start to notice who's not able to handle it, and then they're not allowed to use their phone, or the whole class will not be allowed to use their phone. So that's going to be something that's enforced a little bit more. junior high, 7th uh, and 8th graders in the afternoon, 6th and 7th period, and then I teach two high school health classes and two high school PE classes as well. Um, what's an interesting fact about you? Uh, an interesting fact about me, just want to let you know, school never stops. I went to 19 years of school. Um, it is a lifelong learning skill. Um, I guess I, I really like outdoor activities. I like to fish. I like to hunt. Um, I like to camp. I like to hike. I like being outside any nice day. I like to do PE outside, um, so I like to be outside in the outdoors. Um, there was a, a wall in the hallway that had a bunch of names and numbers and like push-ups and setups. What's that all about? Um, for my PE classes, we do fitness testing, and it is what I call the wall of fame. So the top two or three, depending on the numbers, um, boys and girls in both my high school classes and junior high make the wall of fame. Um, for the records, they do certain tests like push-up tests, they do a mile run, um, they do a sit-up test, they do a balance test, uh, they do um, a couple other ones. There's 10 total tests we do to measure the overall fitness of our junior high and high school students. Um, it, they are tested each quarter um, to gauge improvement, um, to see if they meet the standards, um, and just to get an overall sense of how fit um, they are. Our kids really seem to take off on them and really push themselves um, to the extreme. Uh, it's pretty neat to watch them progress over the course of the year. I would like your opinion on this. If someone was doing a sport, do you think they should do PE? Uh, absolutely. The training we do in PE, far as our hand-eye coordination, far as some weight training, um, far as uh, every skill set that you do in sports is practiced in PE. So it's strongly encouraged if you plan on going out for one, two, three or even all five boys can do five sport, sports in the junior high if you want to do football, wrestling, basketball, track and field, and baseball. Um, so you can do up to five sports. So if you, you choose to play a sport, definitely PE is an elective you should choose. Well, I hear you coach football. But, um, does grades matter much in football? Absolutely. Uh, grades come first. We have uh, a team of teachers and myself who enforce it. Um, academic probation starts after one uh, one week of either two D's or an F. Um, you're put on probation with a tracker. You then have one week to get those grades back up and in an order, um, or you have to sit out for all sports, either football, volleyball, basketball, they're all enforced the same. Um, if you need extra time, we can pull you out of practice for some study hall, or maybe out of my PE class if you're, you're excelling uh, in that class, but grades definitely come before sports. And the last question for you, what is something that 7th graders should know about the way you teach? 7th uh, graders should know the two most important things that, that I expect is you should try your very best every single day. Um, effort is key, and then just have a good attitude. If you try your best, try hard, and have a good attitude, you will improve as a player, as an athlete, and you'll be one of my favorite students. Alright, thank you for joining us today, Mr. G. Thank Hello. you. We, uh, <laughs> you can restart. I don't know. <laughs>
<laughs> no, she's gonna keep rolling. We can cut it out. Oh, oh, God. Okay. Ready, set, take two. We. <laughs> Look at me. Welcome Today to we are here with. Go. Okay. Today we are here with Miss K, um, one of the volleyball coaches, and we are doing an interview about volleyball and what you need to know about it, like the practices. Um, where are the practices? We practice at Beaver, at the old middle school gym. Starting when? You will ride the bus right after school, usually black bus, and we practice until 5 o'clock at Beaver, and then you'll need to be picked up there. Um, are any supplies needed? Yes, we will supply you with a new shirt for the volleyball season. You'll need your own black shorts. They do not need to be spandex. And then you'll need practice gear for every day, volleyball shoes uh, and knee pads. And a water bottle, because there's no water up there that's very good, so bring water. Okay. Um, okay, I can't stand it, I gotta step in. <laughs> you must dress down for every practices. Do not wear jeans. <laughs> I knew she'd show up sooner. Oh, yes, this is Denise. This is Denise, the other volleyball coach. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We With start practice the second day of school. Thank you, Denise. And what about games? Games are Yep, usually twice a week, right at 3.45, and then the 8th grade will follow after the 7th grade. Um, are grades important? Grades are very important. Denise is in charge of the eligibility for the junior high, so every Tuesday you will know whether or not you're eligible because Denise will let you know. You cannot have any F's and no more than one D. If you do, you are on probation for the first week. If you don't bring those grades up, you are ineligible to play the second week. So your teachers will do everything they can to help you. So it's usually on you if you're not eligible to play. Turn your stuff in and you should be fine. Okay. What, what's most important is if your ride is there on time. <laughs> we picked up. We are finished at five o'clock. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's very difficult when we have to wait till 5.30, 5.45 for parents to come get students. So it's very important that you have a ride or you carpool. It's a little bit of a pet peeve of ours. That we have uh, people waiting. So after home games, we are we play Beaver, so you'll need to be picked up at Beaver. And then away games, we alternate dropping off at Beaver, and sometimes we drop off here. So every game, you'll have to ask to know which place you're going to be. And there'll be a letter going home the first week of practice with all this in it. So you can expect to pick that up the first day of practice with the expectation. You must have a physical. We're late. And emergency card and all that filled out before you can compete in the first game. Which is traditionally the second week of school. We start playing pretty quickly. What else is there? Being that there. You need to be on time. You need to have something to change into. Um, you cannot wear jewelry. If you're planning on getting your ears pierced, I would wait till after volleyball season because you cannot leave any piercings in during games. So if you've got freshly pierced ears, you still need to take those out. We can't even take them. So plan accordingly if that's something on your schedule before you start this year. And tennis shoes, they don't have to be special volleyball shoes, but tennis shoes for the court, for practice and for games. Well, thank you. Um. <laughs> okay.